made a promise to my family that I would start taking better care of myself. You have many reasons to stay healthy. Come, come Exercise and physical activity can help. So the National... What's going on, people? I want to be a minute, Paul. Okay, bring him on in here. If he's as big as the axe, we got a nice fish. They'll hollow something. There he comes, big old smallmouth. I see it down there. Bring it up here where I can see it, Steve. There it is. See it out there, people? In the net. Mm -mm -mm. He's not a giant, but he's a good. Oh, pat him on the head or oh, something. Yeah. Just for luck. Hold him up there. Oh, yeah. Look at that, people. Pretty, ain't he? Yeah, Pretty beautiful. Good. Okay. Yeah, right in that gully deal. Okay. Right. Come about off that stump. I didn't hear it ding. Ding ding. Uh, it's good, man. I think it's still doing it. All right, folks. The bill's got a small. Got a, we think it's a small mouth. We ain't seen him. Oh, yeah. yeah. There he is. Oh, yeah, boy. Yes, sir. Yeah, boy. All right. There he is. Yes, sir. Like a nice one. <laughs> All right. Your buddy. Boy. Yes, sir. You you got him. <laughs> All right, do you? I'm hung up over. Okay, mm. Jill. Hold on just a second. Let me get your picture there, old buddy. Yeah, boy, Bill. That's a nice one. Another. All right, buddy. Get another one, Bill. All right, sir. Thank you, Paul. Yes, sir. I can't get it to ding. Got another fish on, people. Let's see. Fisherman, we'll have it up here in a minute. I didn't hear it ding. Uh, it, it, that black thing comes on every now and then. Let me get him unhooked here, Paul. He let it swallow, it looks like, that people. <laughs> I just barely felt a little tap, Paul. He didn't really hit it real hard. Don't knock your rod in the lake. No, I'm trying to keep this off this here point. Come on. Look, come on, I'm getting tired here. Just barely worth caught. Big deal, Hall Smallmouth. Look at that, people. Caught on that little jig again. Yeah, I don't know who that fella is making them, but I need to find him. <laughs> Just have him in the boat. <laughs> All right, folks, Bill's got a bit. Oh, golly, what a smallmouth. Man, a lot. Goodness gracious, Bill. Yeah, boy. Yeah, man, let me get him out in front of the boat here. Oh, golly, that's a whopper. <laughs> Bill, that's a dandy. Look, golly, bum. Oh, yeah. All right. 
Yes, sir, buddy. Ooh, man. Mm, that's what you call one of them chunks right there now, Paul. That's a piece and a half. Yeah, boy. Need the plier? I got it. I got it. Okay. Looks just right, wasn't it? Yeah, buddy. Look at the collar on that thing. Yeah. Oh, that's a dandy there. Yeah, Look buddy. Hold Look still. Here. Look here. Yeah. Put that right there. All right, hold still. I'm going to zoom in on him there. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> I, that, I say we need to find that man that makes them jigs, Bill. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> well, I tell you what, we wouldn't have to look very far for we got him in the boat with us. <laughs> Boy, dang, that's hey, a nice fish. He just tied these. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah I know we stayed up last night tying flies, folks, before <laughs> we come fishing. All right, let's get another one, Bill. Let's do it. Shoot that wire. I'm not doing something right here. Push. All right, folks. We got Paul here. He's got a big, large mouth there. Paul, that's a nice one, man. I mean a dandy. All right, Paul. You can turn him back, I guess. Okay. Put him in the water. All right. All right, folks, old Paul's got another nice large mouth there, Paul. Look at the collar on that, would you? Yeah, buddy. It's beautiful, isn't he? Yeah, look at that. Yes, sir, buddy. That's a good fish, Paul. Yeah. Nice and fat as he can be. They are fat, aren't they? They are fat, Bill. All right, that Bill's got a good fish on here. I don't know. It's a large mouth of Kentucky. Large mouth. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yes, sir, Bill. Good job. Finally landed. Finally landed one. That a good one. Finally landed. All right, old buddy. Old Billy boy. Yes, sir. Sir. <laughs> All right, Billy. Hey, good evening, folks, and welcome to the Let's Go Fishing Show. Uh, as you can see, I've got two guests with me tonight. Uh, uh, Mike's off working, and, and I apologize for the film on the fishing there. Uh, we think I got mo had moisture in the camera. So, Bill, you and Paul just have to forgive me on that. I thought that thing would, would be uh, better playing back than that. But anyway, we'll, we'll try, I'll try to dry it out, and we'll uh, have some more film next week uh, on the last couple of days we fished out at Del Holler. Uh, I want to say hello to my dad and to Bill and Polly up there in Clinton. And, uh, folks, uh, I'm honored to have these two gentlemen with me. This is Gabe King. Gabe. Glad to have you, man. Thanks for having me. And congratulations on the big catch. He's the gentleman that caught the new state record, 15 pounds, 2 ounces. 15 pounds, 3.2 ounces. 3.2 ounces. You guys, you, guys, you must have put a little water on it in. <laughs> <laughs> and Dee Wilson. Dee's a tournament fisherman, a lure manufacturer, you name it. Dee's probably done it. Pleasure to be here. Glad, glad to have you, Dee. Really am. Uh, we, uh, I talked to... Uh, uh, to Gabe and and uh, so I, and D both and I'm just gonna let them kind of give you some rundown on their history and Gabe go ahead you can be first. All right, I'm Gabe Keen. I'm a I live in Campbell County. I'm a teacher at Campbell County High School. Uh, coach the high school fishing team there at Campbell County. Uh, tournament fisherman. Uh, what else need to know? <laughs> well, that's a pretty good start all right. anyway. <laughs> uh, all right, how long you been teaching? Uh, four years. Four years. Four years. Okay, that sounds good. We won't hold it against you since you live in Campbell County. <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding. You know that. D, what what do you got going on? I've known D for a long time, folks. Uh, well, uh, Dwayne Wilson. I uh, also live in Campbell County. Uh, uh, been tournament fishing. I actually go back a long way with Steve fishing uh, way back on Norris back in, gosh, I guess in the 80s even. I guess in the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, um, my son, he fishes on the uh, on the fishing team that Gabe coaches. Uh, he's in, he's 17 now, just turned 17, and uh, uh, they're having a really good year, last couple of years at that, and really enjoying that, and working with Gabe on that, and uh, uh, got into the rod building business about five years ago, and uh, then started uh, tinkering with bait the last couple of years, so... Uh, this, uh, that's been one of the main things we worked on the last year or so, me and a couple other buddies kind of working on that together. And 
they're actually doing most of the actual manufacturing, and uh, I'm just more or less kind of working with them on ideas, but they're doing most of the actual building. Mm -hmm. Okay, that sounds good. I've heard a lot of good about the rods. I haven't got to get one myself yet, but I'm looking forward to it, D. Uh, sounds good. Uh, now, Gabe, uh, I'm going to get back to you, and I want you to just tell us, me and the viewers, I want to know. You know, I like to know a lot of things. Probably don't do me any good, but I still like to know them anyway. Uh, tell us about your fishing trip. How, how, what got you started? What got you down there on Chickamauga? I mean, just, just start from the beginning, you know. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> well, I went down there to practice for a tournament uh, that I was going to fish Saturday. And being a teacher, I normally I wouldn't have been able to take off and get down there, but we had two days off for illness that week, so I, I got to go down there without taking a sick day. But anyways, I was practicing for the, it was a catch ministries tournament down there on Chickamauga um, out of Grasshopper Creek and uh, went out fishing Thursday, uh, wind 20, 25 miles an hour and snowing, uh, caught two fish, but you know, like we was talking about earlier, you just couldn't hardly stay on the lake. Mm -hmm. And uh, But I went back out Friday, uh, got a little bit of a late start, it was about 9.30 by the time I got out there. Caught one fish on a rattle trap, uh, put in down at Chester Falls boat ramp, down mm -hmm. the lower end. Uh, caught that fish on a rattle trap probably about 10 o'clock, uh, run around, tried a couple of different things, and just wasn't working out. So I picked up the rig and went to a spot where I caught fish before, and uh, about 11.45 when, when that one hit, and then my day was done. <laughs> 11.45. Now, folks, that is Friday the 13th. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that figure that, go figure that out. But Gabe's not superstitious. Well, I just wasn't <laughs> thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I know what you mean there. If I'd catch a state record, I wouldn't be superstitious either. Yeah. Uh, but that, uh, that, that sounds good. Uh, kind of fill us in on, on what happened after you got the fish in the boat, you know. Well, I got the fish in the boat, and... Uh, I got my golden rule out, my measuring board, and took a picture of it. Um, and I got it on my handheld scales in the boat and weighed it. Uh, weighed 15.3. And I uh, actually called D. Wilson here. <laughs> uh, just told him I was still in disbelief. And I told him he didn't believe me. And finally he got to believe me and said, you better get a hold of somebody, you know, about this fish. But um, so I, I proceeded to call TWRA and... Uh, they told me the steps I needed to take and how, mm -hmm. to, how to get it to certified scales and, and that kind of stuff. So, Man. That sounds, there's a picture of the fish right there on the screen, folks. I'll tell you what, that's a monster. Yeah, it was, it was, it, it, uh, did you think it was that big when you caught it? I knew it was big, but like that's I said, big. I mean, I was I was just kind of in shock how big it was. I've never seen anything like that. Yeah, I, I hear you. I know what you're saying. It's a... <laughs> It's, uh, you know, I can imagine, you know, uh, uh, a quick story. That brother, uh, my dad and my brother and Mike, my brother, and I were on, uh, we'd run off over to uh, Santee Cooper uh, Thanksgiving weekend there years back, and uh, we were fishing in that canal. Mike throws back behind the boat, and my dad's always, you know, on to Mike about this and that. So he says, Mike, quit. You're going to hang up back there. Well, sure enough, Mike says, mm, I'm hung up. Well, he wasn't hung up. It weighed 15, 15 on the rusty dock scales over there. Oh, yeah. When it come up, I thought it was a turtle. I said, he snared a turtle. <laughs> well, it was so big, it couldn't break water. Yeah. You know, all I seen was his green head, you know, and I thought it was one of them old green turtles, you know. And then I, and then it rolled up. I said, golly, boom, what a fish. I jumped down in and get the net, you know. Right. But I, I know what you're talking about, and, and uh, uh, it, you know, uh, it, it, it was just unreal how big that fish was that Mike caught, and I can imagine what that looked like if you got there. And uh, it, 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 they just don't look real, do they? No, they really don't. And uh, uh, well, uh, what what do you think the key is? And I know I, I I followed Mike Jolly, the TWRA biologist, and and had him on the show over here with me before, and and uh, uh, and and I know. Talking it from history down there, a lot of people back years ago uh, really fought hard to get that Florida strain of bass in Chickamauga. Right. And uh, it looks like it's paying off. 
Yeah. You know, uh, and, and, and in that respect, it, it, you know, it's, it seems like it's working, plus the aquatic vegetation that was mentioned uh, from Jolly uh, also, too. Uh, uh, you know, the mill full and stuff coming out, but, you know, I don't know if that fish was around mill full or rocks or what, but anyway, the Florida strain of bass seems like to me is the big key down there. I, yeah, I think so. I mean, it's, it's a great lake before that, I think. Obviously not what it is now, but uh, something I didn't realize until I was actually talking to Mike Jolly is it's been 15 years mm -hmm. that they've been working on this. Right. And, um, you know, they're starting to see more of those eight plus pound fish and this fish, you know, hopefully that kind of went a long way with proving that what they were doing was working. But yeah. I mean, it sets up, Chickamauga sets up for big fish and, and a lot of fish anyways, but then when you introduce mm -hmm. the Florida strain, I mean, that just sets it over, sets it over the top. Right. Yeah. That, that, I definitely, you know, shoot the last three or four years down there has just been unreal. You know, a uh, five fish limit, what, 40, 44, 44 46. Yeah, 46 pounds, yeah, for five fish. I mean, uh, that's telling you something's going on, yeah. you know. And uh, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm proud that it, it's that way. I just hope they start catching a lot of them and running them through the dam there at Watch Bar and releasing them. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's what I'm looking forward to. I tried to talk to Jolly about you know, watch bar, uh, you know, putting some of those Florida string bass in watch bar, and he didn't feel like that the, the he, he thought the water was too cold, and, and it may be. He's a biologist. I'd just like to see him in there myself, you know, if they'd survive. Uh, but, you know, uh, uh, any big particular thing about the people that you talked to after you caught the fish, I mean, uh, that you want to mention? That, in other words, if I catch one, what I need to expect? <laughs> well, you, you can expect great things from, from TWRA. I've, I've got to brag on them because I was, here I was in shock, you know, and I was just trying to get a hold of somebody. And, and when, I, when I got TWRA on the phone, I mean, it, it was just, mm -hmm. here's what you do. Yeah. Take it here. Fill this out. Call me back, you know. Right. They, they kind of calmed me down and, and, and showed me what I needed to do. And uh, they, they're doing a great job. I, I, well, you know, you're 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 help proving their point is yeah. all I can say. They're, yeah. they're, you're their best best spokesman right so. now. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you this: What about the, the fish? D did you get to release it back, or or is it? No, I did you, not. You, okay, I, I have it. I'm gonna get it mounted. You gonna get it mounted? Okay. All right. I, hey, it's your fish. I'd probably have her mounted too. <laughs> Ain't no doubt about it. That's a that's right. a, a once in a lifetime event. Uh, in the way I look at it, you may go down there next week and catch one way sixteen pounds. Well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, let me get into the fishing aspect of it. Uh, what do you? What was you catching the fish on? Well, what I caught this fish on, uh, it was an umbrella rig made by. D. Wilson at Dixie Custom Rods, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I was I was throwing 20 pound fluorocarbon line, uh, seven foot heavy rod, and I was sitting in about 20 foot of water, uh, and the the area like we were talking about earlier, uh, these bigger fish. I mean, it was a place where I'd caught fish before, but it seems like every time I back out a little deeper, mm -hmm. and slow down a little bit, yeah. that's that's when you get a bigger bite, but. Uh, the key was the the umbrella rig, <clears throat> my Dixie Custom Rods, and uh, have little zoom swimming Super Fluke Juniors yeah. around the outside of it. Those little swim baits, to me, I think that's the key. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think one of the key words, Gabe, this time of year, uh, uh, you and I talked before the show. Uh, we're catching fish on these rigs right now that that before we've never had anything to catch them on, you know, uh, a crankbait or uh, uh, a lot of people back in, in past years, this time of year, caught a, caught a lot of big bass crappie fishing mm -hmm. yeah. because they was fishing slow enough, either with minnows or uh, uh, grubs or uh, uh, doll flies <coughs> or whatever, you know, uh, to, uh, to catch them. And, and just think, you know, about all we had was a crankbait and, and and some of that kind of stuff, a hellbender or 
uh, something, uh, a bomber, and, and a lot of times that you just troll him with that, you know. And uh, so, yeah, I think we've made a, a, a leaps and bounds on, on, on the baits that we're catching the fish on right now, this time of year especially, and, and your, your fish just proves it, you know. Uh, I, I, and my point is that the big key is being fishing it slow. When that, yeah. that rig that, that gives you that versatility, you know, let that thing get down there and just creep, you right. know, and, and the fish don't have to move <coughs> a whole lot and, and uh, to get it. So, uh, uh, so you think the fish was in about 20 foot of water? No, that, that's where I, the boat was positioned at. The fish, yeah. if I had to guess and pinpoint it, it would be 12, 14 foot. foot. Yeah, okay. All right. That sounds, sounds like a plan. Uh, D, what do you think about the, uh, uh, you know, we called it on one of your baits, uh, or one you helped design, manufacture, whatever. Uh, what do you think about the rig? I mean, I know you've got them sitting over there. You just want to set them up on the table and let's look at them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these uh, these guys want to look at them. My goodness, great goodness, folks! I want you to look there. Uh, whew, man, life. All right. Well, we just uh, just brought a few of the different versions that we make. Uh, all right, start out and, and and tell us all about them. Okay, that's one thing we try to do is do you know make rigs that's a little different because you know everybody's making make them it. now. So it's a uh, we try to make some that's a lot more specialized for Tennessee and a lot of a lot of situations. Uh, mm -hmm. We've actually the actual one that Gabe that we made for Gabe is actually a prototype, and I don't have one of those yes. here. We actually he actually called us. A few days before the, you know, before he was going, and actually, specifically asked for a, a compact, a really compact okay. five wire with one blade, yeah. one really small blade on each arm, and uh, we've, uh, you, you know, we're going to work with Gabe on that too, you know, maybe putting that into one of the lineup too. But that was actually there's only two of them in existence right now. So, well, Gabe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We're you. Right. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll sign up for that job right now. Yeah, that's we'll shake on that in a little bit. Okay, buddy, sounds good. We'll we'll sign a piece of paper here in a minute. Go ahead, D. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, you're okay. You're okay. <coughs> Talking about the you know the rigs. Oh, we try to do something more specific for for Tennessee. Mm -hmm. This is the newest one we've come up with. It's a. Uh, we're going to call that the uh, Tennessee Mini Flash. Mm -hmm. It's just a you know really small, compact three wire, and got the uh, it's got nine the really small oh, blades right. on it. So you start out that's a number zero willow leaf. I really didn't even know they made, made a number zero, zero willow leaf. Till, yeah. So we got into this, but uh, that's one we start and that's been a big hit. So we just started doing those right before Christmas, and mm -hmm. we uh, at the mm -hmm. shows we've done that one's been uh, by far the biggest hit. You can you know <coughs> pretty much throw it like a spinner bait. Right. Yeah, and, uh, you know it's a uh, we rig it up with like a uh, the weedless belly hooks, you know, and fish it in brush and round bushes, Bushy. and oh, just yeah. throw it just like spinner bait. You know, mm -hmm. they found says, but that's a that's a newest one by far, been the biggest seller this year. Mm -hmm. And then this is the one that uh, um, we call that the mega school. The mega school. It's got a you know, of course, all this it's already set yep. up with a hitch. I set up for dummy bait. Yeah. And then of course, you know, you put the three with the hooks. On the you know the middle and then on the bottom, right. then you got these two dummies and uh, right. but that's been uh, now on Chickamauga. I think when the water gets warmer, we've sold a lot of these. Oh, yeah. Casey Martin, you know he won that FLW down there a year before last on a on a similar rig. It was, mm -hmm. uh, and that's when you know we got into making these and a lot of the guys even uh, a lot of the guys will even throw them in the winter and early spring right. down there. The that that set up there, it seems like it's a you know a big fish bait. Yeah, but it takes it's a load. So you get that oh, thing yeah. loaded up with hooks. It's a it's a load to throw. Yeah, I bet it is. Yeah, and then this is a this is the one we call the Mega Flash. Uh huh. It's similar to that one, except it's got nine blades on it instead so, of a yeah. You know, and then uh, then we got a this is another one we made specifically for Tennessee. It's a to keep it really compact. It's a three wire. You don't have to deal with the dummies on the back. back. You yeah. got a but it's got the dummies in, but you know, you got a small oh, blade right. on each arm, and then you got a dummy set up in between, and mm -hmm. then you got your, you know, of course, everything on the back then is going to have hooks on it. You don't have to right. deal with the dummies on the back. Yeah. All right, man, yeah. that's a, that's a, 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 quite a variety, D. It right. really is. It, it, you, you've got, uh, 
a, a, a big variety. And, and, and that comes back, you know, I'll ask you this. Uh, you know, we're talking about that thing's hard to throw. Right. It, it, it's a drag on you. I mean, to fish that thing all day long. What uh, what do you find? Uh, you know, I know the, the, the little mega flash right here, I, I, I guarantee you doesn't have a whole lot of drag on it. No, no, and it casts is easier too. You know, the yeah. bigger ones even, not only fishing them, but even casting That's them. Good. They catch a lot of wind. It's almost like it. So at a time, I was like throwing a parachute, <laughs> but it's a, but you know, you can get into these, you can throw, like I say, you can fish it just about like a spinner bait. But yeah, you know. okay, all right. And we do rods for them too, you know, specifically for these things too. But. Making the rods. Uh, folks, I will say this, Edgemore Outdoors got those things, Jim's got them locked up, but he's got them. Right. He's got to, <laughs> he's got to ask for them, you know. Right. Uh, uh, Jim he, was actually the first one to have this, the, the new he, one, the, yeah. the Viper. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, well, yeah, I, I got one over there the other day, uh, so uh, I didn't have one. And, and uh, uh, But anyway, Jim's got them there at Edgemore Outdoors, folks, and, and uh, uh, if you're looking for one, stop by there. He's got probably all the models there that Dee showed you, and, yes. and uh, the prototype that Gabe was using it won't be on the market till we get into some legal ramifications, you know, huh? <laughs> It'll be here soon. It'll be here soon. <laughs> oh, Lord, I'm just kidding. Uh, you know, uh, that, that's a good thing. But those are excellent baits, and uh, you can't say enough about them. I mean, they're fish catchers. There's no doubt about it. It's, uh, uh, you know, instead of getting one hamburger, you get four or five. Right. You know, and, and uh, so, uh, uh, and, and this time of year, and, and the water cold like it is, it, you can fish that thing real slow, and that's what the key is, I believe. Just the, the speed of the bait, uh, they just, you know, they're just laying there gobbling up. What You know, what's really happening, folks, is the shad, uh, all the shad, uh, a month ago, you they were, two months ago when we were down there at Watts Bar crappie fishing, the shad was just running around you know, addles uh, turning yeah. upside down, and you know that it's going to die. Uh, it's just a matter of the water getting a little colder. And uh, mm -hmm. when they're doing that, them fish just lay down there and under them, and they just drop right right down to them, and they gobble them up. You know, and even the crappie was full of full of the shad, right. and, and that we'd been catching down there, Mike and myself, and uh, Mike and Brad. You know, we catching them out there in 40, 45 foot of water, and you get them up, and they just bloated with shad. And uh, so, you know, uh, that's that's what ha that's what happens in, in, in the cold weather. Uh, the bait fish die off, and they just, you know, get out of their habitat and, and do crazy things, circling, doing cutting circles, and doing everything in the world besides this natural swimming. And them fish just go gobble them up, you know. So that plays right into their hand right there. Sure does. Uh, call, we do have the phones on, don't we, Herschel? Okay, we'll be looking for some phone calls. People ask you guys some questions uh, uh, and that kind of thing. I know we're competing against the, the vol volunteers and the lady vols supposed to play <laughs> at 9 o'clock, but we've got the, the state record holder sitting right here with us. That ought to be a pretty good draw. <laughs> 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 uh, 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 let's see. There was something else I wanted to ask you, Gabe. Um, you got anything lined up? You know, I mean, uh, uh, they're going to have to change the book, uh, the uh, fishing guide that they hand out. Uh, have they said anything about that? They have, and it, it actually, if I'd have caught the fish, I, I think they reviewed the final copy of the fishing guide six days before I caught the fish. So it'll be it'll be the next next, year the next year before I'm in the book, yeah. Okay, then, well, uh, all right. I was kind of wondering about yeah. that because I knew it was, about time for the books to come yeah. out, and I thought, well, I just wonder if I got the new change in there. Yeah. But that's uh, I just just finished it. In this record that you broke, the guy was his fourteen what seven, or four, uh, uh, fourteen something there. I read. It was fourteen eight. Fourteen eight. That you're exactly right. Fourteen eight, and, and your fish weighed uh, fifteen three point two. Point two, okay. You gotta throw that point two. In there. You gotta throw that point two in there, folks. <laughs> we don't want to leave that out for sure. That might be the, the whole thing. So, uh, all right. 
Good deal. Um, and you're going to have the fish mounted, which will be. Can't wait to get that to see that. Oh, no, I can't either. Yeah, you may have to come back down here after you get him back. And, I'll do it. And, and, and show him off, you yeah. know. Be glad to. Um, anything that you can tell us that, uh, you, you know, help the fishermen? Uh, you know, there's there's some big fish in Watts Bar, and there's some big fish in Norris. Uh, is there anything that you picked up off of that big fish that you might pass along to some of the other fishermen? Well, the... <clears throat> the big, the biggest thing with with these rigs, talk about them for a second, is like Dee was talking about the the little three wire here, the viper throwing it like a spinner bait around bushes and trees and stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Any time that I've ever been throwing a a five wire uh, fish in that 12, 14 foot range for a long time, uh, I couldn't get bit on the rig, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. and I honestly believe it was because I was going too fast and not letting it get down moving it too fast mm -hmm. I just I can't stress enough how important I think it is to back out a little deeper and reel it a little slower let it get down there I mean it's okay mm -hmm. if it's bumping bottom every now and then all right that's a that's a good point Herschel's that call for us here we go <coughs> oh. uh -huh. I think he's done hung up on us Let's try it one more time. Okay. All right, yeah, we're good now. Hello, caller. Hello, Steve. This is Mike. Hey, Mike, buddy, I've been worried to death about you. Son, I've been in the hospital. Thought I was going to die. Tried calling in the shows and, and couldn't get through because it's there wasn't nobody there to take my calls, and I thought, well, what in the world is going on? <laughs> well, uh, I, yeah, we've had uh, sickness here at the studio. We've had cable trouble here at the studio, and you name it, and we've uh, had it. Last, last week, I think you announced that you couldn't talk, take call in, but yeah. before that, I was trying to call in to Mike when he was by himself. Bless his heart. Yeah. He couldn't get in, so, but I understand why now. But, yeah, I was in the hospital up there at the Veterans veterans home up in Johnson City but doing a lot better now good a, you sound good yeah doing doing much better hey, I'd like to congratulate Gabe there my goodness I'm about to turn 70 years old been fishing for something like that all my life and here one of these doggone camel camel boys come up with <laughs> I know I know I thought the same thing but I wasn't going to tell him my dad my dad was, Campbell County. He grew up in Campbell County, so my mm. mother and granddad lived there, and the, the Laxtons who had that that uh, cafeteria down there on the Main Street uh, was my aunt and uncle. So I've, I've got some Campbell County blood in me. So maybe maybe I haven't given up yet. <laughs> I know but what you mean. Congratulations, Gabe, for for catching that that bass. You, you've got a lot of people right now envying you, and uh, that's a good thing. Thank you. I, I agree with that, Mike. Uh, I'm one of them that's, you know, that's envious. <laughs> Absolutely. That's been our dream all of our life, guys. Yeah. Since, yeah. since our dad took us when we were four years old, that's been our dream. You ain't kidding. Yeah, <laughs> exactly right. I wouldn't have, ca I wouldn't have caught that. I, what I'd have done, I was waited till the next day and turned it in. I wouldn't have turned it in on the 13th. <laughs> <laughs> I'm and that's probably the truth. Yeah, I'm going to rub that in on Gabe, but that's, uh, you know, heck, I couldn't have, if that had been me, I'd have had to, yeah, I don't care when it was, I'd have had to turn it in like he did. <laughs> I've had one smallmouth on that I thought could have been, but I've never had a largemouth on on our area waters that, that, that I thought would get, even came close. But I have had one smallmouth, so. Mm -hmm. Man can continue to dream. You know what I'm saying? Oh yes, sir. I hear you, Mike. I hear you. Well, guys, congratulations. Uh, I, when my wife next time she goes over on that side of uh, Clinton, I'll have her stop in over there and buy me some of those umbrella rigs. Uh, I'm I'm a lure maker myself, and of course, since I went down, I haven't been able to do much of that. But, but why didn't we think of that 30 years ago? <laughs> Buddy, I don't tell me that. I can't. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, you know, we thought of everything else, but 
I know, I know. <laughs> it's just unreal. Why, why in the world did we think of that back in the 60s and 70s? I heard that. That's the way it goes. Hey, guys, uh, congratulations. Hey, Steve, here in the next week or two, uh, call me home give me your address again. I know it's about to become spring. Hey, Mike, I, I'm glad to hear from you. My wife's asked me three or four times about you, and I said, I don't know. I'm going to find out. I said, I may have to go drive down. So I'm glad you called in and you saved me a trip. <laughs> well, I left Brad a, a, a message on his uh, answer machine up there to let him know that I was trying to get in to tell everybody that I was trying. So okay, uh, I don't guess you got the word on that. No, I anyway, didn't. You got, uh, congratulations again, and uh, I'll let somebody else uh, call in here and hope, hopefully uh, you can get a little bit more information from Gabe. All right. Thank you, Mike. All right, pal. See you now. See you, buddy. All right, good to hear from Mike. Or Gabe, you heard his congratulations there. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's uh, other than just talking fishing. How, how long have you been fishing, Gabe? I've been tournament fishing probably eight, going on nine years. Eight, nine years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, shoot, that yeah. sounds good. All right. Hello, caller. Hello. I was wondering where I could buy a Dixie Custom Rod. A Dixie Custom Rod, D? Uh, well, we actually got uh, several ways. We got a, I got a website. Uh, it's uh, DixieCustomRods.com. Got uh, several dealers. Got a, um, uh, gosh, I hope I don't miss anybody. Of course, got Edgemore Outdoors. Got Jim down there at Edgemore Outdoors. Got a Buck Shot up in Jacksboro. Got uh, Bucks and Bass up in Dandridge. Got uh, both C and C outdoor stores, and uh, got one in Concord and one in uh, uh, I guess that would be Maryville, the other one, and then got a uh, McKee outdoors down in uh, uh, they're down on the lower end of Maryville, going toward Von Or. And uh, but uh, any you know any of those channels will be fine. I prefer you go to you know directly to the dealers. That's uh, that's the preference, but uh, but you can can order through the website also. Did you catch all that, caller? Yes, sir. All right, buddy. Anything you want to ask, Gabe? Um, no, sir. All right. Hey, we appreciate you calling in. All right. Thanks. Thank you, buddy. All right. Well, Chuck's Gabe. I thought you'd be more popular than that. <laughs> do, do what you can, I guess. <laughs> oh, hey, I'm just kidding. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of people watching the ball games and this, that, and the other probably and, and uh, not getting to call in or what have you. Uh, and uh, weather's been bad. You guys know that. Uh, what are you thinking about uh, when you're going back to Chickamauga? Well, I actually today got a call from one of my buddies, and I'm, I'm thinking about going back down this Saturday. Mm-hmm. Uh, supposed to be, what, about 46 degrees, I, I think? I think so. Yeah. Be a good day. Uh, yeah, uh, compared to what we've had in the last week and a half, oh, two yeah. weeks, it'd oh, be, yeah. that'd be a good day. Yeah. Um, uh, for sure. Um, D, you got anything you'd like to add? Uh, no, nothing, nothing really. Just, of course, want to congratulate Gabe also. He's, uh, uh, didn't really know Gabe until about a year ago, but he's coached the boys at school, does a tremendous job. I mean, he's been there for those boys and. They all look up to him. I think they can relate to him where he's he's younger. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, younger than, than a lot of the dads. And the uh, boys look at him just like one of the guys. And uh, he's really done a lot, and he works a lot. It, it's That's a harder job than, than you know, I've just been around mm -hmm. him, seeing what he right. has to do to get them boys signed up for all these terms because they fish a lot of different things. They fish the Bass Pro Shops High School Series, Morristown Marine High School Series, and then, the TBF stuff and mm -hmm. Bassmaster stuff, yeah. and uh, and it's just uh, it's unreal what I, you know. A lot of people take that for granted. Right. It's a lot of work for him to do that, and uh, and with the support too, uh, my boy and and uh, Brian St. Johnson, and they fished the Bassmaster High School Classic last week, and uh, of course it was in South Carolina, and mm -hmm. Gay was actually he was right there with us. He come down on Thursday and spent the whole weekend with us. So that's a uh, uh, that, just, that says a lot, you know. I really appreciate that. Yeah, that, that does say a lot. Sure does. Hello, caller. Yeah, I was uh, wondering about uh, 
Yeah, I was wondering about that uh, umbrella rig in the middle of the table there. <clears throat> How many hooks is on that? Because uh, Tennessee law says you're only allowed three. Yeah, it, the five war, <clears throat> that, or the the, um, yeah. the 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 mega school here. Which no, one? The other one, the one in the middle. Okay, this yeah, one. Yeah, the mega. Yeah, well, they actually these don't have any hooks on oh. them. We just they're, they're the just this place. The big one, this one right here. Okay, okay, the ones with all the baits on it. Is that the one you're talking about? The one I'm yeah, holding. That's the one. Okay, uh, D, you explain to him how the hook system works. On okay, that. yeah, sir, you can only have three hooks per uh, per law. Uh, what you get into on these these all these baits up in the front, these two series of four baits. Those, those are actually just on a, a little mechanism called a hitchhiker. Mm -hmm. It just screws up. Um, I'll show you. I'll screw one off. Mm -hmm. The bait actually just screws up on that hitchhiker, and there's no hook in it. You know, it's just a, it's just a, a, you know, we call it a dummy bait. It just adds attraction. Most of what we've learned with these rigs is, um, oh, I just won't screw that one back on. <laughs> you, you can only, of course, use three hooks. We put the three hooks on the bottom two wires and the center wire and 90% uh, of the time they'll bite that center they'll bite that center bait anyway just because it's I guess it's lagging back and they see that yeah. it looks like a maybe one of the men are struggling you know yeah. and they, they that's typically the one they bite or either if they don't bite it you know it's usually one of those because usually you're fishing these things above the fish and they're coming up but 90% of the time they'll bite the center one and usually if they don't they will bite one of those bottom two and I Grant, I have had a few pull dummies off. I mean, it's not completely, right. it's not completely, you know, uh, to say you're not going to have one bite a dummy. I've got bites and had them pull the dummies off. That's one reason, you know, we we tried to to get a lot into these three, three wires, wires where you you know you still got the dummy yep. baits in the front, yep. but at right. least everything in the back is going to have a hook. So yep. all three baits in the back is going to have a hook on those and. Yeah. And uh, I just feel a little bit more comfortable fishing those, you know, just uh, where you don't have those dummies on the back. I agree, D. Caller, does that answer your question? Yes, that thank, thank you very much. Hey, no buddy, problem. thank you. Thank uh, you very much. I appreciate it. No problem. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, hey, give us a call, and, and uh, if we can help you in any way, and, and you can call D there, uh, you know, if you need any, any more answered questions or whatever. Uh, and Jim Williams over at Edgemore can help you if you Get by there to buy a bait from me. Thanks for calling, bud. Yeah, I want to get one of them uh, kind that uh, he caught that fish on. I agree with you. I'm waiting on it myself. We <laughs> hope we'll have something going on those, and I'd say the I next two or three weeks. I want to put my name on the list. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, Jim will, Jim will be one of the first ones to get them. So, uh, you know, you, you can feel my numbers on my website, but... Uh, you want to check in with Jim? He'll be one of the first. Uh, he'll be one of the first. He's been one of our biggest dealers on these rigs since the start. He sold a, he sold a ton of them and heads. We actually do the heads too, and uh, actually do lure retrievers designed. I don't have any of those. Do a lure retriever designed especially for these rigs. And uh, Jim's been, uh, he's been our best. You know, our biggest dealer for rigs up to this point. All right. Thanks a lot, caller. Hey, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. All right, buddy. Call back. Okay, we got another call. Let's see who that is. Hello, caller. Yeah. Go ahead, buddy. We got you. Hey, Steve. How you doing? Hey, buddy. I'm doing good. How about you? Good, good. Hey, first and foremost, I'd like to congratulate Gabe on that, uh, record that's a, a every fisherman's dream uh no doubt no doubt and i got a question for mr wilson there uh would really like to know what he attributes most of his success to is it just like a god-given talent or is his brother <laughs> part of that <laughs> uh, this must be somebody yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you who it is. Too, though. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you who it is. <laughs> Steve, that's <laughs> not. <laughs> Go ahead, D. That's a good question. Just living right, I guess. <laughs> All right. Mm. Well, I, I, is that a good enough answer? 
<laughs> uh, yeah, I guess we'll have to do. But really, congratulations, Gabe. That's, a, that's an awesome fish. Uh, it's, a good, it's a good deal. Glad right. to see a local, local somebody get that state record. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, I, I'm I'm with you. I'm glad to see that happen too. Uh, we just got to get more of them. That's all. Yep. All we can say. All right, well, y'all have a good night. All right, buddy. Appreciate right. you calling us. All right, bud. All right. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, you know, while we got a minute here, I'm gonna tell you guys this. I got uh, the guy that caught the big muskie over here at Milton Hills gonna be on the show with me next week. And folks, yeah. I want you to, you know, make sure you tune in. Uh, I can't think of Corey's last name. His first name's Corey, and I can't think his last name. And I, I left his <coughs> card out there in the truck. Uh, maybe somebody's calling in to tell me. But he's going to be over here next week on the show talking about his catch of the big muskie and uh, that kind of stuff. So, you know, we're coming on with this stuff, boy. Hello, caller. Hey, Steve. Hey, Willie. What did you have last week? Buddy, we had technical difficulties, Willie, last <laughs> Thursday night. They was down here working on the cable line right below it, behind the studio here. We couldn't uh, get out. Hey, <laughs> hey uh, congratulations, Gabe. That fish, uh, you ought to get them to sign up on the East Tennessee Sportsman Association and give us some of them fish and watch bar. Well, I'm going to show him, give him an application here so that he can do that, and, and we'll talk about that right here in just a second. I didn't know it was getting that late, but yeah, that was one of the things I wanted to mention. All righty. Just thought I'd call in and uh, say congratulations to him. And uh, uh, that, um, I just forgot his name. What it builds the rods. Uh, oh, D? Yeah. D. Wilson, yeah. Yeah, I, I love to build them too. Oh, really? Good deal. Yeah. That's uh, a willy word there on the line. Okay. Well, uh, y'all have a good one and be safe in the snow. And uh, if the weather clears up, I'm going to try to get, get everybody together and have a meeting next month. Hey, that sounds good, Willie. I'm glad you called in and got me on this cause, so that I can get everybody to clued in on what you got on your mind there. That sounds great. Yeah, I've got to find a meeting place and uh, and talk to some of the members and see what would be a good night to, or a good day, afternoon to, uh, to have the meeting. I got you. Make sure when you def uh, get that info, call me there for next Thursday and let me pass it along, would you? All righty, I sure will. Okay, buddy. See you, right, Willie. Get safe. All right, buddy. <clears throat> Thanks for calling. Bye-bye. All right. Uh, while we got a minute, let me just go ahead and run through a couple of things here. Uh, mm, Riverside Sportsman. Herschel, have we got that flyer that we can run up on the screen? The, the Sportsman's Expo up at the church, uh, March the 7th, Riverside Sportsman's Expo, uh, Second Baptist Church, Clinton. I don't know if I got that to you or not. But anyway, folks, okay, that's, uh, you know, I had uh, uh, Greg uh, Witt over here last week, and uh, we talked about that sun Saturday night, so we want to make sure you folks remember that. Uh, D, I don't. I know uh, you can look that over. Uh, uh, Edgemore Outdoors is going to be there. I'm going to be there. A lot of other vendors are going to be there. And that guy that's uh, the deer hunter. Uh, uh, that's get, uh, what's that? What's that deer place there? Uh, David Morris. Yeah, uh, David right. Morris. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually going to be there too. Yeah. Right. Well, good. Right. Perfect. That's excellent. I got to get Gabe to be there. We'll be in business. Well, I, I, is that the March the 7th? Mm -hmm. I, I am going to be there, and I'm going to have the Campbell County High School Campbell fishing County. team. We're all going to be there. Perfect. That'd be some good film for me. Yeah. Sure there will. You there you go. Excellent. All right, folks, don't forget that. Uh, I know Reynolds Racing Marines going to be there with their side-by-sides and a bunch of boats. Uh, so, uh, uh, like I say, I plan on being there. I'm going to have Bill Nichols and, and uh, Paul Harrison with me, and Paul's going to be tying up some flies. and. 
in jigs, and uh, Bill's going to be keeping me in line, so uh, uh, we're expecting a big thing up there March the 7th. Uh, next thing is Tim's tires. I've run into a deal down there. Uh, boat trailer tires are six ply for 60 bucks a piece. P205 75R14. So if you're in the need for some boat trailer tires or utility trailer, get down there at Tim's Tire. Uh, he had he bought a hundred of them on a on a, a good deal, and and he's passing the deal along to the to the people. So uh, for sixty bucks a piece, man, they were I was tickled to death. So uh, uh, if you're looking for some good trailer tires for your boat trailer or your utility trailer, go buy Tim's Tires and check that out. Uh, Edgemore Outdoors. Uh, all kinds of new baits and lures Jim's got in. He said the floor's setting full of stuff. He's going to have to start moving some merchandise, so uh, uh, he's got a lot of new stuff in. Uh, this uh, uh, River Rock Plastics, New Spro, the rats and the frogs, uh, uh, a, lot of, a lot of new plastic stuff he's got in over there. So if you hadn't been by there in a little bit, you might want to go check it out. He has... Got a bunch of stuff in uh, that you might be interested in. Um, if you guys, I know the weather's been bad. If you're looking for someplace nice to eat lunch, stop by Secret City <coughs> Pies over here. You can't beat their food, I promise you. Got the best pork in the country. Barbecue pork, you can't beat them. Uh, it just, they, they just know how to cook. That's, that's all there is to it. Uh, the sign shop down at Harriman. Uh, you've got any signs that needs to be repaired due to all the wind, snow damage, give them a call. They, they, they do that. They restore them, repair them, replace them, whatever you might need. Give those folks at the sign shop a call there at Harriman. Uh, Chucks, where's my other room of list? Here we go. Uh, Citizens Bank, First Bank of Oliver Springs, they got... Uh, uh, the five locations, you know, Harriman, uh, Wartburg, Oneida, Oak Ridge, and Oliver Springs. So if you guys need any banking business, don't make sure you go by and give them a chance. Tell them what you got in mind and see if they can help you. Uh, they were on to me a few weeks back about these construction loans, whether it be commercial or residential. If you've got something you want to add on to, build up, or whatever, <coughs> go by and check with them, talk to their branch managers, and, and see if you can work out a deal with them. Uh, Carm, don't forget those people. And uh, Pamela Ann's Fudge Candy, you know, uh, they got the best candy. That they were voted uh, a little place there in Oliver Springs that makes this fudge. Uh, was vote, voted best in, in Boston a couple of months ago by mm. some gourmet mm. magazine. Mm. Yeah, so... They ship that stuff all over the country, and uh, uh, it's, I mean, it's just delicious. Now, what can I say? And they got all kinds of different flavors. I never heard of such, but you want to check that out right there in Oliver Springs. That's Pamela Ann's Gift and more. Uh, check into that and uh, right there in Oliver Springs. All right. <coughs> <coughs> now then, somebody brought up. <coughs> I'm going to have to get a drink of water. Read that off. Talk about that right there, Gabe. East right Tennessee here. Sportsman's Association. <clears throat> East Tennessee Sportsman's Association. Uh, it's the mission statement. Promote the stocking and enhancement of native fish species in all Tennessee lakes. Black bass, smallmouth bass, black and white crappie, walleye, sauger, white bass, etc. Promote improved fertilization and productivity in all Tennessee lakes. Promote habitat improvement in all areas of the fish and wildlife environment within Tennessee. Halt the stocking of marine species such as alewife and striped bass and hybrids thereof <clears throat> without a reasonable public hearing process and the approval of local user groups. Ensure the sportsman <clears throat> has a strong unified voice in the development and implementation of all future policy and programs that affect wildlife and wildlife habitat in Tennessee. Establish and maintain a strong political presence for the Tennessee sportsmen. Ensure that environmental assessment and economic analysis and a political evaluation are provided on all future fish and wildlife programs and policies that are to be implemented within Tennessee. 
We are the consumer and should have a strong voice in the product we are purchasing. Remember, there is strength in numbers. Join today. Buddy, you couldn't have said it any better. Uh, folks, that's, that's what's on the application for the Tennessee Sportsman Association. And this is <coughs> what, the guy, this what Gabe read off there, uh, the stocking and uh, the fish and wildlife uh, habitat and, and, and uh, you know, whatever whatever mate we need, I guess, you know, and, and this, this is our way to be a voice. So there's applications to join this association at, at the sponsors, uh, Citizens Bank, uh, Edgemore Outdoors, Reynolds Racing Marine. Uh, I think I'm almost positive sure that I got some at Tim's Tire. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to give these guys some. You guys can pass them around up in your end of the Campbell County there, and and we really need to get this thing covered up. And I and like we said before, uh, or I've said earlier in the sh on the show, but times, you know, we've got too much water, too much resources in in the valley here to not get the potential out of them. And you, Gabe, your fish just shows that right off the get go. And then the big musky caught right over here at Milton Hill. Yeah. So you know, within a hundred mile radius, of, huh? Four minutes, a hundred mile radius here. You can, you know, we got the state record musky and the state record largemouth, <laughs> and all kinds of water to fish. Yeah. You know, and areas to hunt in. So, uh, uh, need to get this right here. The Sportsman Association. We really need to push this thing and help these guys that's trying to get this thing going as much as possible. Uh, four minutes. Anything else you guys want to finish up on? You got anything? I think I'm good. All right. well, I want to thank you for having us on, and thanks to everybody for calling in to congratulate me and talk to us. All right. You're more than welcome, D. You know you are, too. Anytime you guys want to come back, uh, just give me a call, and I'll try to make a place for you. All right. It's not like I'm covered up with guests. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've enjoyed it, too. Uh, good. Really I, good. I, I, good I, I, I knew you would, uh, and, and I've enjoyed having you guys over here. Uh, it's a great honor to be w associated with you, Gabe, because, it, you, you know, uh, 54 was when right. the old record was caught in 54. Right. So what, 40, 51, 51 years ago. 61 years. Yeah, yeah, 61 years. All right. Uh, I don't have my calculator, so I can't <laughs> have it. Right. Anyway, uh, you know, 51 <clears throat> or 61, that's amazing. Uh, that's amazing, and then just think how fishing has evolved in the last 50, 60 years, and how many people are fishing, and, and uh, you know, uh, back in them days, most people fished to eat, right. you know, uh, when I grew up, was growing up, that's, that was it, we, my dad fished in the summertime, and hunted in the wintertime, and, and uh, most of what we caught and, and killed, we, we ate, you know, and, uh, uh, then the tournament fishing came along, and, and the, and the uh, long after that, the catch and release. Shortly after the tournament started, catch and release was a big deal, and you never brought any home in, right. you know. So, uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, we've seen a lot of changes in this fishing over the last 50, 60 years, guys, I'm telling you. Um, 50 years for me, 60 for D. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but anyway, I uh, appreciate all the callers, and Mike, Richard, good to hear from you. Uh, folks, uh, like I said, next week i got the, uh, the musky fisherman from over here at Milton Hill. He's going to be on the guest, and uh, I'll be looking forward to seeing these guys up at the Sportsman's Expo <coughs> March the 7th. And uh, I'll get my camera dried out so we'll have some good film next week uh, on the smallmouth catching out at Dale Hall. God bless you. Can't wait to see you next week. All right, boys.
until about mid-March. Simultaneously, and this is where this gets a little bit in the weeds, the Senate is going to pass a clean spending bill, meaning there's not any of these immigration executive order-related attachments, and send that over to the 